So I'm going to make this actually short because I have prior arrangements to get to. But I'm going to show you two videos that I think really encapsulate what I've been saying has been happening and been being planned. And I want you to keep in mind that all of this is going to be global while watching this. That's what I want you to keep in mind. All of this is going global. Because th that's what globalism is. All these interconnected world powers trying to force their will on the world. Um, so anything that's going to start in, for instance, Canada or China is going to be everywhere else soon. Because <laughs> th it's not like the elites don't like those countries enough to cease participation and trade with them or anything like that. They don't care um, about the exploitation of the workers or the damage to anything, the death, fucking war crimes. If the U.S. cared about war crimes, they'd be a part of the ICC. But um, they know what happened if they joined the ICC. So they're good, you know. They can't be held accountable for their fucking war crimes. So... With all that in mind, uh, let me present to you this video uh, on Twitter here. And I want you to watch real close for what's going to come to your fucking country. Real close. All right? Travels on his own, I travel on my own. I have the Arrive Can app, and he does not. Okay. He has his proof of documentation. Right showing that he's been vaccinated. Okay. That's all that's required. No, he has to uh, cancel all. We can put him on to birth count nope. that you've done. How come you don't want to do it? Why should I have to? Uh, because it's a requirement to get into Canada. What if he was flying by himself? I, I will be flying by myself, and I don't have a cell phone. Yeah, but that's so what does he do? Put it on hers. No. Yeah, but if I'm flying by myself, how can I do that? Are you guys related? Yeah. yeah. So what's the problem with putting it on your account? I don't think I should have to. Why not? What's, what's Nancy, the Nancy, never mind. This is a bureaucracy gone amok. I know. But you know, this that's why you have to do it, right? This is one of the requirements. It's part of the quarantine act, right? To get back in. Well, so let's just, see. You've got you've got my you've got my uh, uh, COVID shots. I've had four of them. Okay, that's good. You have you have my passport. Okay. Why not? Let's just do the paperwork and get this over with. Because they want the app. The government wants the app. Let me ask you. What, what's what's the reason why you don't want to do it? I don't think I should have to. No, but there's got to be a reason to it. No. I don't think I should have to. But there has to be. A it's I'm reason. traveling. This is this is my phone. It's my app. Okay. I'm just having myself on it. The it's not enough that they force something into you. It's not enough that they empower every mega corporate ally of theirs. That's not enough. They also have to require that you carry a cell phone. Now, remember when I was saying that um, the cell phone is the mark of the beast and that also the ID2020 could be the mark of the beast, like all these things, right? Well, this is what I was talking about because this guy who doesn't have a cell phone is suddenly required to get on somebody else's cell phone app and cannot exit or enter the country without the cell phone. Now, why? Because the cell phone is designed for cashless futures. The cell phone is designed for surveillance statism. The cell phone is designed so that you've constantly got a tracker on you. That's what the cell phone is there for. It's there to consistently track you. That's why the CDC was using uh, tracking data for a bunch of other shit. And why there was a big scandal about that. So, keep that in mind for this next thing. Because any of you who have been following me for a significant period of time, um, or at all, know that I've been talking about um, <laughs> the Great Reset and the tyranny that comes with what they're planning for a significant period of time now. So, this is that in action, and I want you to see what they're planning for 2030 in Ukraine. And I want you to remember that this is their puppet state and this is the government that they want as like a beacon and an example in Eastern Europe. So just keep that in mind while I show you this nice piece of propaganda pulled straight from the vice prime minister 
of fucking Ukraine. Let's look eight years ahead. 2030. The history of the new Ukraine is studied all over the globe. Why? Because Ukraine became the most digital and convenient country in the world. Scripts have replaced bureaucrats. 500,000 former public servants are successfully integrated in the new economy. No more red tape, but paperless. No more banknotes, but cashless. Yes, we became the first country to abandon paper money. Ukraine now has the best tax system for the IT industry and the most affordable e-residency. Thanks to Ukrainian engineers and programmers, the R&D centers of the world's top technology companies operate successfully, and Ukraine ranks first in the world by the number of startups per capita. Ukrainian courts are guided by artificial intelligence, and all notarial acts take place online. Ukrainian customs is fully automatic and the fastest in the world. Customs clearance and car registration can now be done in three clicks from your smartphone. Because of war and internal migration, we have built the most flexible and modern digital education. Brave military and civilians get quality treatment with modern remote monitoring and e-health systems. Ukraine also has the most effective cyber defense in the world. After the horrors of 2022, Ukraine focused on security systems. Now every production facility has its air defense system, and the sleep of Ukrainians is protected by an ultra-modern iron dome. The Ukrainian government is digital, more like an IT company in terms of the efficiency of implementing decisions, and one can register a land plot, start construction, open a business or get a license, and register a car or real estate from a smartphone automatically in one click. Ukraine is the freest and digital, this is all because international partners and the world's leading technology companies supported the Digital for Freedom initiative and united to help Ukraine recover through digitalization. Building a new Ukraine together, free and the fastest, brave and digital. So, remember when I was saying that this was all coming, like, that, that, that they wanted cashless, that they'd muscle it through by saying freedom and shit like that that they would uh, do test it in other countries first, that they would use this sort of thing uh, as a way to uh, get access to basically it. Well, okay, so that's what they're doing here. What do you think paperless and cashless means? What do you think everything being done from a cell phone means? What do you think AI courts mean? They mean tyranny. They mean mass control. They mean surveillance super statism. Exactly like I've been talking about. Exactly like I've been speaking out against. And all, I still, today, have people calling me insane. I, I still, today, had people blocking me over posting facts straight from the horse's fucking mouth. By the way, this doesn't have 378,000 views because of me. I don't know why Twitter isn't properly displaying it, but this is from the fucking vice prime minister of Ukraine and minister of digital transformation in Ukraine, Mikhailo Fedorov. Like, I didn't fucking make this. This isn't mine. They posted this. And people are still saying I'm wrong. How can people be this stupid? Well, because the state has made them passive and obsequious bootlicking slaves. So, this uh, was my, my summary here. They want a society run by computers and a bunch of people to invest in Ukraine remotely so they can tax their way back to wealth and build what could quickly and easily be a dystopia, and the worst part is that the West will probably help him do it for low business rates. It's genius. <sighs> Not to mention that the reason for Iron Domes, it, that Iron Domes exist is because of direct monetary uh, and material support from the US. So even if you don't choose to be an e-citizen, they will make the choice to support Ukraine for you like they've done for a decade and tens of billions now. The U.S. is planning currently a CBDC. They're planning currently a system where unless you, like, have your device 
or are willing to scan your face, you will not be able to buy or sell or move or anything. And they can shut it off remotely because it's all centralized and there is no paper money. So you can't just go to your neighbor and fucking buy something for the paper you have. That's what they want and they're building it right now. And they're telling you about it. And people still think I'm insane. You know? It just kind of blows that no matter how much information there is out there, there are still going to be people who just want to be detractors and just want to fucking talk shit. They don't care. It doesn't matter to them. They just want to feel right. That's all. You know? I, I talked in the same thread with the, the Canada shit about how uh, this is literally the mark of the beast. And he cometh all, both small and, er, causeth all, and both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Biometrics mark your face and hands. A system where you must have an app in order to get back into a country of which you are a citizen, where that app is attached to your facial scan and optional print locking? That checks out. There's still time to say no, yo. I've been talking about this shit for so fucking long. This is an article I wrote, and I'm not sure it's going to display properly, but this is an article I wrote um, <laughs> this, this last year. Like, within the last year, um, and, and, and it was me being right, right? I was right. And it was, like, me talking about having been right about a thing I had written a while prior. I've been right every step of the way about this, so if you want to still see me be right, uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. But there's going to be a lot more corruption there's going to be a lot more evil and and we're only getting started um because the stuff that i was talking about that was the foundation for the new dystopia it wasn't the whole enchilada so i hope you're fucking hungry or that you're willing to say no to that shit and smash the fucking state